Yo, yo, it's a fairy. Hey, uh, I got a question for you. Do you want more energy or less energy when your arrow hits an animal? Considering we have 75% of the kinetic energy of a 22 long rifle, I'd say it'd be smart to have more energy than less. Let's talk about it. So just hang on. Okay, so, as usual, I have a litany of, well, there's only a couple of nitwits out there left. Um, there's a guy out there who uh, writes very long papers and blah, 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 and stays on one tact of arrow energy and claims that all arrows have the same kinetic energy. On this, we can agree, as you see in this chart. I'm going analog today. I got paper. This is the fastest bow I own. It's a dual cam speed bow with a real short brace height. And you can see that the top line is the kinetic energy at the bow. This far away from your arm, from your face when you let go. The kinetic energy is flat. We can agree on that. The argument made by such individuals is that arrow mass does not matter because the delivered energy on target is the same. So we can agree that at launch, the kinetic energy of an arrow system is flat. Never mind the fact that the kinetic energy at the target at 60 yards out of this bow and every bow we've tested is higher at 60 yards than the light arrows and that's a pretty significant change because at the bow they're basically flat. The last time I shot a deer this far away is never. I think the closest one I ever shot was probably four yards with a longbow, straight down. Shot straight through her and she hopped three times and stood there like, I was like, what is that? And she tipped over, it was awesome. Every science person, individual I've spoken to physics people who are not in the archery business nor arguing about this topic of, you know, how to get an arrow through an animal, says to me, momentum is what you should be looking at, not KE, because momentum keeps things moving and is a directional force, whereas kinetic energy is energy in all directions. So what happens here is people will run a kinetic energy graph. Again, I'll throw it up there. I agree, at the bow, the mass of the arrow does not make, make much of a difference. It's basically a flat curve for all arrow masses because the velocity is higher on the light stuff and is lower on the heavy stuff, one half mass times velocity squared, and it all comes out. So if you're shooting your deer within two yards of the bow, yeah, maybe you have an argument. Also, never mind the fact that these guys claim that as long as you have a broadhead on the front and all the energy is the same, the broadheads don't matter. They don't talk about aero flight. They don't talk about tuning. They don't talk about any of that stuff. Just energy. It's all the same. Don't, who cares what you put up front? Because I'm a conspiracy theory guy. My pronouns are, I told you so. This shirt is awesome in public, just to let you know. Okay. Here is the momentum graph on the fastest bow I own. The bottom line is 60 yard impact, and the top line is launch. You can see that the momentum of the shaft increases with mass and a reduction in velocity. That's equivalent, I'll have a graph on that, a chart on the speed erosion versus the mass gain later on in the video. This has remained consistent for three different bow platforms. So this, this chart shows we shot a solo cam that was, you know, pretty moderate shooting. I shot one in the middle. I think it was my Elite Remedy or the Cure. I don't remember. And then my fast bow, which was an Expedition Excursion 6. It's not super fast now, but it's the fastest thing I own. So 
if you've got a super fast bow, do it yourself. It's mo- it's mass times velocity. It's not a very difficult com- uh, equation to uh, manipulate. Manipulate? That's not a good word. <laughs> Put in mass times velocity, and it tells you what it is. All right, back to the chart. So the top line is the launch. As speed goes down and mass goes up, we see an ever-increasing level of momentum at the bow, which is the top line, and at the target, which is 60 yards away in this example. One of the reasons I ran it out to 60 is because there's a lot of guys that say, well, I'm going to shoot the old light twizzler stick because that way it shoots flatter and uh, I'll hit them. Okay, well, will it penetrate? Will the energy be there to get through them? Who knows? Hey, by the way, we're, uh, there's a special deal if you uh, really like coffee, and I'm a coffee guy. Hunter's Blend Coffee is donating 10% of your purchase for Hunter's Blend Coffee to the Ashby Bow Hunting Foundation. You can use code RF or code ABF. I don't get a nickel. Just use the codes. All the money goes to the foundation to support the research that we have planned. And, of course, Dr. Ed's always dreaming up crazy ideas for us. We appreciate your business and supporting the foundation. So as you can see, once again, here's the momentum chart. The momentum continuously rises, and the 60-yard momentum continues to rise as well in favor of a heavier and heavier, ever heavier projectile. In fact, if you look on this chart, a 514-grain arrow at 60 yards has the same momentum as a 436-grain arrow at the bow. I would think if you want more energy on target on the animal, you'd want more energy, especially further down range. So why wouldn't that make any sense? Because more energy is good. Remember, I already said it earlier, we have 75% of the KE of a 22 caliber long rifle. And the last I checked, that's not the most efficient tool for body shooting anything. Wow, rabbits. Okay, so I made a chart of the speed erosion percentage versus the uh, increase in mass and momentum. So we have 436 grain arrow. I picked that one out of the chart. The 388 was the lightest, but there's not a ton of people shooting an arrow that light. 436, 425, 450, somewhere in there. Pretty common these days. And then a 670 grain arrow I picked because that's over the heavy bone threshold. It w- you know, with the right broadhead and et cetera, it would be an Ashby street legal arrow. And we're supposedly gonna be shooting a flying rock that won't penetrate anything. Okay, the first thing you're gonna notice is the difference in mass increase between these two arrows is a 54% increase in mass. And I'll go into a little more detail but it's only at the expense of an 18% reduction in velocity. Momentum is mass times velocity. This is why the chart continues to go up as you add mass, is because the mass gains percentage-wise are significant compared to the perceived significant reduction in velocity. Everybody thinks this is a one-for-one trade-off. Like you add 10 grains, you lose 10 feet per second. And that's not the case. Again, it's 54% increase in mass between these two arrows at the expense of 18% of velocity. And more to come on that. So the net difference in velocity is 51 feet per second, and that's 18% loss of speed. Okay? What happens in this situation due to aerodynamic drag is you tend to have a much more consistent parabola with the heavier projectiles, and you tend to have a flat and dropping off, um, rapidly dropping off uh, trajectory curve 
with very light stuff. You can see this in your pin gaps if you're shooting a multi-pin sight. You'll see them slowly open up over distance, and that is this, the uh, atmosphere eating it alive due to aerodynamic drag, and it can't press against it. And then there's another thing there, just the sheer velocity means it's going faster, and it's pressing against the atmosphere harder, and the atmosphere is pu pushing back at an equivalent rate. Thus, you get like that. If you have a slider, you don't see this. Well, if you look at the tape, the first 30 or 40 yards will be kind of close together and then it starts to open up. And I would think that the guys with a range finder and a one pin sight with a slider, if that's how you choose to do it, then it doesn't matter. 700 grains, 450 grains. Dial it up to the perfect distance and send it. Let the sight do the work. The momentum at launch was 0.52 for 436 grain arrow and was 0.66 for a difference of uh, 14. 27% more momentum at launch for the 670 grain projectile. At 60 yards, 0 0.47, 0 0.61 for 670 grains. Again, the net difference is 4.14. That's because the numbers got smaller, so it's the net equivalent. And then there's a 30% difference in impact at 60 momentum for a 670 grain arrow. 30% more. I already said it. We're already shooting 75% of the KE of a 22 long rifle. I would think you'd want to shoot the highest energy projectile at the target you could possibly shoot. And I'm not going to let this slide by. <clears throat> at those kind of ranges, you really want to have a perfectly tuned arrow. You want to have a very efficient broadhead platform. I, the idea that energy is energy and broadheads don't matter is a uh, hooey is a good word for that. Two blade broadheads are, are on both arrows are going to penetrate better because they have a whole lot less resistance, especially if it's hair popping sharp. Maybe a little bleeder blades are okay, but you start to get three, four blade. And certainly with a mechanical broadhead, open it up at two inches wide and sucking all the energy out of it like it's got a parachute on the front of it is a terrible idea in the interest of being accurate because you're lazy and you won't tune your arrows. You can shoot some awfully heavy arrows a long, long way, and they will track beautifully if you'll put in the time to do so. Thanks for watching. That's all I got to say this evening. See you around.